Hey guys, so uh, this video series is going to be on making this guy. Um, I found this on Google. It is a old concept art for a Zeppelin, a Horde Zeppelin in uh, World of Warcraft. So um, let's see, so I'm going to be using Maya for this. Um, it's not required necessarily, you could use Max or uh, any other 3D modeling program you have. Um, I'm not going to be using anything completely uh, strictly Maya base. I think a lot of the tools that I'm going to be using uh, transfer over pretty well. So I'm using Maya. Um, I have Maya 2018. You don't need Maya 2018. You can use Maya 2016, 17, uh, whatever. Um, I'm going to be using Photoshop as well and 3D Coat. So those are basically the three that uh, you need. Again, you don't necessarily need 3D Coat either, but it makes life a whole lot easier. But you mainly need the 3D modeling program and Photoshop or something similar to that, at the very minimum. So let's take a look at this guy. All right, actually, I already am open here. I have four of them. All right. So let's take a look at them. Um, if you break it down, you can see that there's a lot of simple shapes going on here. It looks complex, but it's really not. It's just a lot of smaller shapes put together. Um, so that's how we're going to. Uh, go about this. We're going to start off with this big balloon at the top here. Um, the more complex shapes will probably be these spikes on the front here and uh, this front little metal piece on the bottom and this back piece. So pretty much all the metallic pieces are going to be a little bit more complex but it shouldn't be too bad. Um, Alright, so let's get started. Alright, so I'm in Maya here. Um, so we're going to start with this balloon guy. So I'm going to do a sphere. And I'm going to turn the grid off, go to display, and click grid. And I'm going to open my channel box and change the subdivisions to maybe 12. Let's see what that looks like. Um, yeah, sure, that'll work. All right, so now I'm going to rotate them. Hold J to rotate along. I think it's 15 degrees. It snaps to it. All right. I'm gonna turn on so I can see the grid here. All right. I'll do it for these also. So I'm gonna pull this guy out. So I'm gonna go to object mode. I'm gonna start to squeeze him out a little bit. Now he's very pointed uh, on the edges here. It looks like the tips are actually pulled out even farther. So I'm going to grab the points. These two. I'm going to press B. And B is soft selection. So if you click and drag, it'll increase the selection or the amount of vertices it affects. So I'm just going to do that. Maybe I might select that a little bit less. Do that again. Something like that. Yeah, that'll work. Alrighty. Um, I'm going to smooth this guy out by just going to soften edges here. This looks a little bit more smooth there. Let's start building this metal tip here. So for this, I all right. I'm gonna take these faces, turn off soft selection. I'm gonna extrude them out. And a little trick. Um, if you do this and you notice that it's extruding out way too much or way too fast if you're just barely scrolling, if you click this little blue circle here and go to click it until it gets just partially filled in, you'll notice it does it a lot slower.
Yeah, I'm changing it up a little bit. It looked a little too big. So now I'm going to make these a little bigger. Sure, that'll work. Alrighty, so this guy's gonna be a little bit tricky. Um, what I can do is I can just start grabbing these faces up here and duplicating them. And that might work. Um, there's many ways you could go about doing something like this. I'm not gonna put all the little bolts in it. Uh, we can just do that in the texture. I'm not going to worry about adding all the little geometry for that. So, alright, let's try that. Let's go, go up to, uh, let's see, mesh. Edit mesh, sorry. Uh, duplicate, go to duplicate settings and make sure it says separated duplicate settings or faces and then click apply. And what that did was it duplicated those faces but also turned it into a new object. So if I select that, there we go. Press center pivot. You'll notice that I still have those faces, but I have this whole new mesh here. So, let's go to these faces. It's kind of annoying um, if you have it literally right on top of the other object. It's kind of hard to select. So, I might want to pull it up a little. There we go. Now, so this guy get, goes in here and then shoots out. So, we want to make sure we keep the curvature of the, uh, the balloon. So, I'm going to take these, pull them in, and again, see if you notice that they're starting to go in into the actual mesh. So, I'll pull this guy down, and turn on wireframe, pull these guys, pull them up. Same with this. Actually, it might be a little skinnier. Something like that. So I'm just squeezing them in and then pulling them up. Simple stuff. Um, follow the curvature here. Looks pretty good there. I'm pull this guy down. Now that goes straight into the back of this circular piece. So I'm just going to push that down. And I'm actually going to take these vertices and push them up a little bit. Alright, so now for this little um, angled part here, I'm going to add an edge, I'm going to put it maybe right about there. Sure. Alrighty, I actually probably shouldn't have squeezed those ones in at the very front, but it's alright.
Thanks. Kind of want to make this top part a little flatter and then we'll just extrude it downward to give it the thickness. I don't necessarily like that groove going on along the top. Alright. So now if you just hold shift, actually select the faces first. If you hold shift and pull down, It'll extrude it out. Now you do have to uh, flip the faces here. So instead of doing that, I'm just going to extrude up. And that'll push it down. And there we go. It's not perfect, but it does the job. And it's going to look better in a minute here. So now what I'm going to do. Let me isolate this. To isolate it, just click on this little button up here. It says isolate select. I'm going to delete these faces. We don't need them. Alrighty. I'm going to click on this guy. Uh, duplicate selected edge loop. I actually have this on my own toolbar. But uh, let's see if I can find it again here. I don't remember exactly where it was. I don't know. I don't remember where it was, but it's somewhere along the top bar here. But uh, duplicate selected edge loop. So it's actually kind of a cool tool. If I just click on it and click on that, it'll put two edges on each side of it, equal distance away from it. So that's pretty handy. I'm going to take those two edges, just pull them in a little bit. And you notice that it sort of gave me that weird looking groove in the center there. I'm just going to push it out. And I'm going to take these two, oops, these two vertices, and pull them in and push them up. Same with those two. Cool. Alrighty. So this is going to be those spikes. So hold shift and drag up. side view which is actually the front because I oriented it weird but oh well it'll be alright all right, so it looks like there's four spikes so let's see if we can make them we're gonna need to add a couple more edge loops and do a little bit of cutting with the multi-cut tool to get this properly cut here. So first I'm going to add another edge loop right here. I'm going to add one right there. And then right there. And I'm going to go into whichever view is your side view. And start pulling these down a little bit. Just to get the overall form. Then we're going to go in and actually give them a little bit more mesh to them. Or more character to them. Shape, that's what I'm looking for. More shape. 
They're also a little uneven in the distribution here. I don't particularly like having these long polygons here. So I'm just going to smooth them out a little bit more. Oops. When in doubt, use a wireframe. So you don't accidentally select something you weren't intending to select. Alright, those are going to have to stay right there. Although this one I might be able to move up. Yeah, looks a little better. And if you notice that if I zoom in too far, it starts to cut away. That's actually the camera uh, clip plane, plane. Sorry. So if you go to channel box and click on this little guy, camera attributes. No, there we go. And if you go to the near clip plane and you put 0 0.5, what that does is it just shows more the closer you're at. It so it does a little bit here. Um, I can just make that smaller if I want, but I think this is fine. Alrighty, so that's the overall shape there. Now what I'm going to do is isolate this guy again and then delete these four faces right here. Don't keep faces you don't need. And then you know, click on this edge and double click on this edge. And it didn't want to do that. Okay, let's try it again. Click on that edge, double click on this edge, double click on this edge, and on this edge. There we go. I'm going to go to the top, and I'm going to scale them out just a little bit, a little bit that way. Maybe not too much, but just to give it a little bit of a bevel instead of going straight down. And if you see here, this isn't exactly sitting on it properly. So what you can do is just go to the multi-cut tool. And I'm going to take that vertice and just cut them right down to there. Let me make sure that I got that edge there. Alright, and press enter. Do the same on the other side. Enter. Now, Theoretically, I should be able to move these down. So I'm having a little bit of a problem there, but I can pull the other vertice up. And these look like it's a little flat here. So I'm going to take these top vertices. And push them up as well. Just keep playing with it until you get the result you're looking for. Let's get in there. Slowly but surely. I might do 
these two. Pull them in a little bit. All right, I think that'll work for now. Okay, so let's give these spikes a little bit more shape to them. So I'm gonna take my multi-cut tool again. And I'm just gonna drag, oops. It's gonna draw a loop around this. I'm going to close it. I'm going to do the same for the other ones. Make sure you end up closing the uh, loop, otherwise you're going to get some funky geometry going on and the program's not going to like it. So make sure it says close right there. There we go. That one we don't actually need geometry on because there's not a little um, little bit of a circular cut into it. So let's go into the side view again. Take these vertices and start cutting them in a little bit. Pulling them down. Trying to just round it out a little bit more. Now if you really want to, remove this uh, sharp edge right here. Oops. Yeah, it's not one of that. Yeah, this is a five-sided. Okay, so first let's fix this geometry here. So what you can do is take that edge and that edge and delete them. Now go into your target weld tool. Pull them there, and pull that one there. Cool. Now I'll take care of this end gun in a second here. So again, take this and this and delete them. Merge these. And the target weld tool, you have the modeling toolkit. I'm going to get target weld right here and the multi cut tool. So if you're not sure where these tools are that I'm using, um, they're around. <laughs> they're either under mesh, edit mesh, or mesh tools, or in the modeling toolkit. And everything in the modeling toolkit is also up on the toolbar up here, they're just different placement. And um, if you see what I did right there, if you notice that it was kind of hard to select that edge because the little gizmo is in the way, this little guy. Um, if you click on an edge and press the Q button, it will uh, make the uh, gizmo invisible until the next time you click on something. So, little handy there.
Alright. So we have an end gun right here. So in order to fix that, I think the easiest way is just to cut it. Multi-cut, click on this, and drag it right there. And that does create a triangle in the front, but I think we can get away with it right here. And it's not too bad. Um, it's not going to be animated or anything, and that would that part never would be animated, I don't think. It wouldn't make sense to animate that metallic part, so you can get away with that. Um, usually you want to stay away from triangles if you're animating certain parts, because um, you can get sort of shifty looking shading going on. Alright, so now let's go back to what I was going to do. That's also an Ingon actually. In fact, all these are Ingons. So, that's what we're going to do. We're just going to cut a line through there to remove these Ingons. Actually, that didn't work. It's kind of a puzzle, um, figuring this stuff out sometimes. Let's see, what can I do here? I can cut it right through here. Um, that won't be exactly the greatest looking geometry, but... Sorry. Because I want to cut a, uh, I want to put an edge loop right along here to even this out. But what I actually can do is do that cut with multi-cut tool. Cut from here to there and remove that end gone so now it's a polygon. Do the same for here. It's just a puzzle, honestly, trying to figure it out. You don't want too many tri triangles going all over the place, but I think that's what we're going to do right now. Simple enough. Now we can take the edge loop and put one right through here. Right in the center there, in the center there, and in the center there. So now if we go to the side view, we can start to round this out a little bit better. And not have that sharp not have that sharp um, little corner there just makes it look a lot better all right now we're getting somewhere that's looking a lot better Actually, might be a little bigger. Should I make it bigger? Um, nah, I think we're all right. I can just make the spikes a little bit taller, though. That's what I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna do. I just did the uh, mesh display soften slash harden edges. I have a setting on 53 right now for the angle. Um, 
the higher the angle, the more smooth it will be. So. We don't really want it smooth all that much. We still want some nice edges going on. All right, so now let's go to this side wing here. Um, I don't know the actual technical term for that on a boat, a sail, but I don't know. All right. So let's start making the sail. So it looks like This is where you sort of get to the point where you have to make it look practical. Um, obviously this is clip art, and or not clip art, concept art, sorry. And uh, if you see this piece, this cylinder or cylindrical piece wouldn't exactly fit on this base right here. You can see it's sort of shooting over the side. Um, so we have to make that actually work so you know, this cylinder piece is going to have to be smaller which I don't really want to make or we can just make this base part a little wider to fit the cylinder part on take these two faces and let's see here these two actually I'm just gonna duplicate it over I don't know why I'll do it same on both sides all right so I'm going to duplicate these center pivot pull it out a little bit now I want to make this little um, base part here. So it looks like it's pretty rounded. So I'm going to take these two faces, I'm going to extrude them out, <coughs> and uh, yeah. Push that in a little bit. Get rid of these two back faces. Cool. Alright. I am going to actually I'm going to double click on if you double click on uh, the split selected ring or if you just press the little box to the next of it. Let's see here. There we go. If you click on this box right here, it'll pull this tool settings up. And then you can do multiple edge loops. And you can put in however many you want. You know, if I put in five, it'll do equal distance of five of them. But I'm going to do that. I'm going to put two here. So it'll give me the perfect distance. Now, you're going to want to uh, click relative distance from the edge um, before you close up the tool settings. Otherwise, every time you click, it'll always do two instead of where you want to individually select them or place them. Alright. I'm going to round this out a little bit. And bring those in a little bit as well. Actually, I don't want to select these back ones. Now it's quite bigger than it should be, so it's going to scale it in. All right, now I'm going to take these faces again. I'm going to squish them in a little bit. And so we're going to have to do a little bit of uh, adjustments here to the concept art because it doesn't really look practical the way that's sitting on top of that 
So we're going to have to take that into account. But we're starting to get it. Looks like it's pretty much flat on the sides. And these actually go up. like with the smoothing on. I'm going to adjust the smoothing a little bit. Just going to crank this up a little bit more. It's getting there. It's still a little wide, but again, we want to make sure that the base sits on top of it and looks like it's supposed to be there. So I think that's good for now. Now I'm going to go and make the base of the uh, sail. I'm going to adjust the subdivision here. Let's try 12. Eh, 